So this is a brief overview of how I use um, different LiDAR uh, imagery layers to map cliffs in uh, some climbing areas that I've been to. So one of the challenges with cliffs, uh, we're looking at OpenStreetMap in the uh, JOSM editor here. One of the challenges with cliffs is that the aerial imagery can make it somewhat difficult to see um, exactly where the cliff top is. Like I can see uh, that there is some open rock here, but it's not exactly obvious where that um, the cliff top actually is. Um, and then there's some trees will overhang it. Like I know there's a big cliff along here, but that's not really visible in the um, satellite imagery. And as well, the satellite imagery can be warped in very steep terrain, depending on the angle of the satellite uh, was and how perfectly overhead it was. Um, so um, what I'll often do is enable um, the LiDAR uh, imagery layers, layer. So this is captured by a plane survey usually um, where uh, laser rangefinders are used to create a multi-wavelength um, 3D point cloud uh, that gets then converted into what is essentially a 3D model of the terrain that can be very accurate. And then that model is uh, artificially shaded and projected into a 2D, 2D image. And so this really highlights, here are these cliffs that we were climbing that slope down this way. And then here are the cliffs across the valley um, that I was looking at. So it becomes very easy to see where that transition from um, steep though sloping terrain to close to vertical terrain happens um, in this uh, hill shade imagery. Um, so I surveyed this area and this is my GPS track and you can see it's pretty wiggly because of the, uh, this was just the phone GPS and it was reflecting off the cliffs and trees and other things. Uh, so often I will also use the Strava global heat map. Um, so Strava is a uh, fitness tracker app that a lot of people use so we can see, um, get their uh, aggregated uh, GPS tracks here and so I can identify whether or not mine is close to the average and that's where likely where the trail is is more the average than just where my particular track was. So um, to map the cliff tops I can just go in here and I know that this is a pretty vertical cliff here um, it might not always be and just start actually tracing that edge um, so that starts right there. That's where we were going up and down climbing. And this, by looking at the LiDAR layer, um, I'm not going to get fooled by tree cover or tree cover on the ledges and that sort of thing. Uh, so I can just tag that as a natural cliff. Um, that's what these cliffs are in OpenStreetMap. Tag this next one. And um, so on. So it really helps to know which way the uh, terrain is going and um, what the landscape is because had I not actually been here I would have thought that maybe this cliff continues but actually it turns out there's a little gully that's not a cliff that is where the uh, hiking trail the approach trail um, comes in so in this way I'm going to just switch to a layer where I've actually ad already added all of these make that visible there we go so here we can see um, throw the satellite imagery. So here are all the cliffs and approach trails that I've added. And so as, when looking at these, you can see here's a bare rock area, um, which there's a big flat top above the cliff that is bare rock, but is the cliff edge is actually further out. So that's easier to figure out by looking at the, um, the LiDAR hillshade layer rather than just looking at the satellite imagery. So once that all gets 
uh, uploaded um, to OpenStreetMap, then uh, it will end up looking like this. And I'll be able to use it next time I go out.